Christ Way Church welcomes you. Let's hear what God has to say through Pastor Anu. Praise God. Good morning. Greetings to you all in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know God will take what enemy meant for evil and turn it for our good? You may be going through many things in your life which you might have not expected. If you keep walking in faith, trusting God, even when you don't feel anything before you that can be trusted from your heart, if you keep trusting God, you will definitely see the favor of God. You will see victory. Our subject today is love God and live victoriously. Lord Jesus Christ said in Mark 12:30. And you shall love the Lord your God from your whole heart, from your whole soul, and from whole mind, and from your whole strength. This is a commandment all of us know. So, what does it mean to love God with all of ourselves, with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our strength? If I ask you now, do you love God? Definitely, you will all say, yes, we do love God. But There is a difference between believing in God and loving God. What is the difference? We first need to know how God defines love. Love is a complex thing contrary to popular notions. Loving is not a feeling or just an emotion that you can fall into and fall out of it one day. Love is complex meaning that love involves many things. To love someone means that you also love the things about someone this is most true of love for god our love for god we love him and that leads us to love everything about god if you love all what god is doing all what he is then only you can love god but we diminish the meaning of god's love when we view it as simply an emotion or feeling that's why sometimes people get some emotional feeling to god they will be telling i we love god we go to church we study the word everything but something bad happens their address only is not there isn't it that doesn't mean you are loving god if you are loving god it should be constant it's not a variable factor we may love someone because they have done some good to us and if they stop being good to us we stop loving isn't it and love is not simply a positive feeling based on the current circumstances love is more than that love is a decision of the will to act in the light of deep abiding concern and affection for the object we love we have decided to love a thing then only we can love isn't it just an emotional love or first love that is not love that is the reason many people love jesus christ that was the first love afterwards they are not there in the same love if you really love till you die whatever you go through in all your ups and down and all your good and bad times you will love god that is the real love hallelujah so god loves us even if we are rebellious if we turn against god also god loves us but god doesn't like the way we are sinning he doesn't like the way we are rebellious he may punish us he may discipline us but still he loves us why he wants us to turn to him and live a transformed life and be blessed that is his love that we don't understand that is the reason we love god if he gives us something what we ask isn't it that is just like how we are loving the people of this world if the people are good to us we are good to them we will be loving if they are giving us what we ask we will be loving to them and we will be good to them the same thing we follow after god also so that is wrong loving god is a command it is a commandment to love him when god commands us to love him with all our heart soul and strength it teaches us how we have to love god we are not to love god with only a part of ourselves but we are to love him with our every thought emotion feeling will word action in the light of our desires to please and honor him it's a commandment for us to love him with all our heart mind and strength 
because God knows that we cannot love him with all of ourselves. So, he is commanding us to love. He is asking us to love. It is like, I am telling you, you don't like me. Please love me. How do you feel it? You may be hating me. You don't even liking me. Not even one factor is there in me to like me. But still I am telling, please like me. Love me. You cannot. God knows that. If they keep getting something only, they love God. That is the reason it's a commandment for us to love. Hallelujah. As I mentioned earlier, there is a difference in loving God and believing in God. Today you may be believing in God. At the end of this message, you should check in yourself whether you are loving God or not. Hallelujah. Those who believe in God may believe in God, but they don't love to obey what He says. But those who love God will obey God 100%. Today, if you say, I love God, and that love is initiated from Him, God is the actual source of our love. We read in 1 John 4, 19, We love because He loved us first. He infused us with His love. So, those who are responded to His love, God's love, they will experience God's love. So, now, if you say, you love God, I don't know, in whichever the way you are telling, you love God because you have seen something in God and God has loved you. So, if you really understand the love of God, you will love God. Sometimes you doubt the love of God, isn't it? Don't you doubt the love of God? Nobody is opening the mouth. Yes, most of the time you feel as if there is no God as if this God is not loving you. Hallelujah. So that's the reason I told, if you understand that God loves you, you will definitely love. If you understand somebody really loves you, don't you love that person, whoever it is? You tell me. Hmm? Really, in spite of whoever you are, in spite of whatever you do, that person is loving you. You will really, even if you don't want to love, you will really fall on that love. Same is true with God. God loves you. In whichever the way you are, whoever you are today or in the past, you may be saying, I am a dirtiest person. I don't think my, my sins will be forgiven. That much dirty sin I have done. But still, God is telling, Come, I will forgive you. I will cleanse you. I will make you a good person. Hmm? I will give you a life. You may be thinking that today there is no solution for your problem. But God is telling, come to me. I will give you a solution. Hmm? This is God. So love isn't merely a feeling. God is love. God loves us and becomes a man named Jesus Christ. He demonstrated his love for us to the utmost by dying on the cross. Many people won't believe that. Show us where Jesus Christ died on the cross. It's all story. Somebody has written it. How can we believe that Jesus died on the cross? Jesus came from heaven, hmm? is born in the womb of a mere woman. He is born in this world and he lived to die on the cross, to forgive our sins and to lead us a righteous life and give a good life. This is what God Almighty did. But people don't believe. People said, we have not seen Jesus. And whoever is written the Bible, they are telling that people have written the Bible hmm, by the inspiration of God only. You can write God's word. And if you really study the word of God, many of them are telling, we have seen, Thomas has seen Jesus. Paul has seen Jesus. John has seen Jesus. Matthew, they all were with Jesus Christ. Don't you believe what they have written? Why don't you read what they have written? They have seen Jesus Christ. They were with Jesus Christ. They were hanging around with Jesus Christ. They heard what Jesus Christ has told them. And they have written. Still you don't believe? You should believe. Hallelujah. That's the reason many don't believe in God. Over the past two millennia, there have been very few that recognize that Lord Jesus Christ is God Himself. 
many people will tell that i believe there is a power i believe there is god almighty but i don't believe that jesus is that god eh? every god is god they are the source to reach that god almighty no that is the reason jesus christ told i am the way i am the truth and i am the light i am the only way people will tell christianity is so narrow minded they don't believe in all the gods other people are very broad minded and believing in all the gods 3000 gods they have but there is only one god jesus said i came from heaven beside me there is no god but many will come and tell that it is me don't believe jesus christ has told then people will tell who has written those who heard has written see now you are with me whatever i say you can understand isn't it the same way people were hanging around with jesus christ they have written the bible hmm? with the inspiration of god it is written other than jesus there is no other god in this world i came from heaven to reveal that god almighty see this scripture so people doubt even people who were hanging around with jesus christ also doubted jesus told i came from heaven all the truth he was teaching and he was telling them but still people doubted one doubters occurred we will read once philip had the same doubt john 14 8 through 11 philip asked lord jesus christ lord shows the father that's enough for us who is this father who is this god almighty show us that's enough for us at that time how did jesus respond to philip 9 through 11 how i been with you so long and still don't you know me philip whoever has seen me has seen the father how can you say show me the father do you not believe that i am in the father and father is in me the words that i say to you I don't speak to you my own authority but the father who dwells in me does the work so people were not believing they were asking shows the father then he is telling don't you believe what i am doing i am he i am his incarnation i came from heaven if you don't believe me believe through the works i am doing and in other place john 10 37 38 jesus said to such doubters many were doubting not only now people were doubting seeing jesus christ face to face people doubted then today what is the doubt people will believe in jesus christ eh hallelujah so to doubters jesus is telling in john 10 37 38 if you don't believe me believe through the works i do that you will know that i am in the father and father is in me and we both are one hallelujah so if a person understand what jesus christ has done on the cross father has sent jesus christ into this world for you and for me and for this entire humanity jesus christ is not come in this world to make a community or a religion called christianity jesus christ has come god has sent jesus into this world to save this humanity from the sins and sicknesses and from all the tragedies that they are going to meet in this world so people will ask oh you are talking this much about jesus christ your jesus is so cruel your god is so cruel what calamity is going through in this world where is this god can he save this world poor people are suffering what is the answer what is the answer tell me my dear friends they all rejected this jesus christ they all rejected their fathers their forefathers rejected this jesus christ and told he is a christian god so generations after generations are suffering and people will blame on god you tell me what is the logic come to me i will explain about this god today i am standing here not by my might or my decision or by my want 
He has anointed me. He has called me. He told me to go and serve him. You may ask, how do you know all this? That is what. How can I explain to you? Only I know. I know the love of God in me. I know today what I am doing. But I cannot explain it to you. You have to experience it. Hallelujah. So why the world is suffering? Because they have rejected Jesus Christ. That means God has sent Jesus Christ for the people to have good life in this world. That life they have rejected, they have rejected Jesus Christ means they have rejected their blessings and they have accepted the calamity, sickness, whatever the tragedy that is coming upon them, they themselves have accepted and blaming it on God. Hallelujah. So, if a person understands what Jesus Christ has done on the cross to save him from his personal sin and from his sicknesses and from the tragedies and the troubles that are going to come in future, we don't know. But we are with him, we are safe. If we are with God, we are safe. Otherwise, we have no guarantee. Hallelujah. Then, if a person understands who Jesus Christ is, then he will respond to that Jesus. Then he will accept that Jesus as his personal savior. There is no doubt about it. But doubters will never accept. See, with Jesus Christ only, there were doubters. Then, how about today? So, why do you need God? Now, do you understand? God is telling, love me, love me. With all your mind, with all your heart and with all your strength. It's a commandment. So, don't you love a God who is after you to give a good life? Tell me, don't you love that God who is after you to give a good life, to change you, to help you live in this world a healthy life, a wealthy life, a prosperous life, a life with fulfillment? Don't you love that God? If you do understand, you will accept Him. Hallelujah. So now, how do we love God with all our heart, mind and strength? Loving God from all of ourselves begin from our heart. Because heart is who we are. Heart is our subconscious mind. Loving God from our heart means what is there in our heart? Our heart is our inner man. That is the seat of our will, our decision, our emotions, our feelings. Deep-rooted emotions, deep-rooted feelings, deep-rooted pains, everything is stored in our heart. Hallelujah. When we turn our heart to the Lord, His thoughts become our thoughts, His feelings become our feelings, and His decisions become our decisions. Hence, in our emotions, will, and conscience, we should love God. That means we should keep defeating the wrong things, wrong thoughts, wrong feelings, wrong pain. Whatever comes inside of you, you should keep defeating and believe God and replace them with the word of God. Do you understand? I don't think. See, I am not talking about the physical heart. Physical heart has no muscles to do all what I am talking. I am talking about the spiritual heart. The spiritual heart is who we are. Our heart is the place of deepest emotions. Our heart is the center of deepest hope. Our heart is the source of our pure and impure thoughts, good and bad intention. Our heart is the location of who we are. Did you understand? That's the reason Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard your heart with diligence for from that your life flows. Depends upon your heart. Today you have a life. If your heart is good, you have a good life. That doesn't mean that you are earning money. Anybody can earn money. In a wrong way also people can earn money. Your good life. You have peace, joy. You have health. And that's what you are giving to other people. Anybody touches you, life flows. That is who you are. We are not that. In Christ, we should become. 
in our heart we have stored all our intense feeling our sorrows our lust evil thoughts despair fear everything our pain everything is stored in our heart that is our subconscious mind hmm? see that is the reason sometimes you will be worried so much you don't know why all on a sudden your joy is gone your peace is gone you are thinking something else that can be visible on your face even if somebody identifies that you will tell no i didn't think anything i am all happy but subconsciously you are thinking that pain that has happened in you 20 years back 40 years back 10 years back or 5 years back you didn't forget or forgive that person so that revenge is coming that anger is coming you are into that so you can't enjoy isn't it sometimes you may talk the talk which you never wanted and you will think i you i could have not spoken like that why did i speak why i am speaking all bad things which i don't want to speak isn't it it happens so we do speak the things we don't want to speak we do think the things we don't want to think so what's the remedy psalms 19:14 psalmist is telling lord let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing unto you you have to have this prayer every day lord let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing to you because whatever i have stored in my subconscious mind i will be keep meditating all unwanted things selfful things lustful things i don't want today that i have accepted jesus christ i praise god for jesus christ i want to live a clean life but i am not able to i am not able to i am reading i am meditating i am praying but it's not happening i don't want the way i am speaking but still i am speaking oh lord i don't want to think the way i am thinking wrong things but still i am thinking oh lord please help me every day you should pray this prayer lord let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing unto you hmm? if this prayer is there you are loving god with all of your heart if this prayer is not there you are not loving god with all of your heart you cannot in fact you want to love but you cannot without this prayer so that is called loving god with all of your heart now loving god with all of our mind mind is where always thinking conscious mind what i told about heart is subconscious mind this is conscious mind where always we think subconscious mind also we will think what's the difference what we have stored up stored up materials we will think now the supper fellow is coming new thoughts that is in the conscious mind that supper fellow's thing i have not recorded in the subconscious mind if that fellow is a bad fellow that record may be there because i asked the supper for 20 rupees he said 30 rupees kammi kodalla madam jasti agide supper rate i was bargaining but he didn't give but the other fellow gave me for 20 rupees so i am keeping unforgiveness with that sappu fellow so i will remember when i hear that sappu sappu i will remember oh avana beda <laughs> otherwise i don't have to remember anything just a passing remark you understand that is conscious mind so our mind is the leading part of our soul it directs the rest of our being it influences what we love and what we choose that's the reason bible is commanding us to set your mind on the things of god romans 8:6 says if you set your mind on the things of god you will live but if you set your mind on the things of the world you will die that means purposely you have to set the things of the lord that means see when i hear that sapophilus voice immediately that old memory will come but i know that no yes he didn't give me for 20 rupees i asked but the other person has given but immediately that anchor came now i don't i will go and buy even if today he is asking 40 rupees i will buy from him 
I want to show that love to him. Hmm? I am free. Isn't it? So that I have to decide. Where? In my conscious mind. In my conscious mind, I have to think against something for what old thing has happened. Did you understand? Already you have stored items in your subconscious mind. Through your conscious mind, you have to remove them. Subconscious mind, your heart. Subconscious mind will never sleep. It will be always working. It will be always working. That is the reason every morning you will get up with that revenge towards that person. Every morning you get up with that sadness because every day you will tell, what is the use in living? No use in living. Waste life. When I will die, I don't know. I want to die today. Every day you are meditating this. You have stored suicidal tendency. You have stored in your subconscious mind. So every morning you get up, again meditate. But if you are a child of God, you have to cast that out and tell, Today my God is for me. Even if nobody is there, I have my good God for me. Even if my mother leaves me, my God will never leave me, never forsake me. My God has come in my life to give me a life. All my situations will change. All past things are gone. Today I am living a good life. I will have a good life. My family members will change. My situations will change. You have to meditate consciously every day. Every day you have to think. What you think only, you will store in your heart. Otherwise, if you are not cleansing your mind, you cannot cleanse your heart. You have to make effort to cleanse your mind. Then only you can cleanse your heart. Are you getting what I am talking? This is very important. I have talked many things about mind to mind. That is the reason most of my messages you can see about mind because our life is where? In our mind. Mind gives life. That is our soul. Jesus came to save our soul. If mind is prosperous, everything is prosperous. Your life is prosperous. You will be a good person. Education, whatever you want, you get if your mind is prosperous. That's the reason. Third John, second verses is telling. As your soul prosper, you will be prosperous in everything and in good health. Today you are thinking, God will not give you health. God is there to give you good health. You don't have to suffer with ill health, sickness. You can throw that medicine and start loving God. That is the medicine for your sickness. Understand, dear friends, I am his mouthpiece. I am not Chuma coming here to sell Jesus Christ. My duty is not to sell Jesus Christ. My duty is to give you Jesus Christ to give a life. Hallelujah. Give a clap to Lord Jesus Christ. You are all sitting like just one statue. I am talking the truth. Hallelujah. You should not be like statues. You should be bubbling. Life should be bubbling inside of you. You should be a channel to give life to the other people. Eh? Christ way members, rise up. Rise up. I want some people bubbling. Having bubbling life. Eh? How life? Give the life to others. Whoever will touch you will get the life. Hallelujah. I want some people to rise up with me. That is Christ. Otherwise there is no use of coming and sitting in the chair, warming up and going back. There is no use. You could have been slept. Today it was raining. Hmm? I praise in the raining. Something we sang today. I was just getting laugh. Oh, they might have been laughing and coming in the rain. I laugh in the rain. I laugh in the sun. Huh? That is the meaning. Oh, even if it is raining, I will go to church. It is going to be very cold. I can't get up. I want to sleep. But the service is at 7.30. I will get up and go. Hmm? When that life is there, you will always think about that. But if you are thinking, oh, what is the use? Eh? Some people are thinking, Jesus is just drawing me to him. What he wants from you? Eh? He's cheating me. He wants me. Jesus Christ wants you. Understand? He loves you to give you a life which nobody can give. Understand, dear friends? So, from our mind we should love. How do we love from our mind? All the thoughts that are coming wrong, negative, Sinful thoughts you should capture, give up, replace with the right thoughts. Yes, 
I am getting unforgiveness to that sapo fellow when I hear his call. No, I will not. I will love him. I am going outside and end up a I am asking just to have love with him. He may be thinking, I am not going to be able to do it. I am not going to be able to do it. He too will have unforgiveness towards me. So even if I don't want, I am going and making friendship with him so that he will not have any unforgiveness to me. Hmm? See how? You should understand, you should make an effort. Love can be developed, it is an exercise. You have to exercise. So wrong thoughts will come. Wrong thoughts will come. Daily, from morning till evening, wrong, sinful, unwanted thoughts will come. Sad thoughts, grieving thoughts. Hmm? You should capture them. No, I will not think like that. What Jesus Christ told, rejoice always. Trust me and have peace. We don't have anything to have peace and joy. But he says, I am going to change your situation. You don't have to die in that situation. I am going to prosper you. Yes, I believe. Hmm? And I am walking in God's ways. This is mind. This is how you are loving God with your mind. If you are not capturing all the wrong and negative thoughts that comes and goes, you are not loving God with your mind. Did you get me? And how do we love God with all our strength? When we are loving God with our mind and heart, our body follows. Our body follows. What we think, our body will do. How do you get the self-control? When you start cleansing your mind and heart. When you start cleansing your thoughts, your action will be righteous. You will get self-control because you told, yes, I should not be angry at that sapo fellow. Hmm? That made me to go and ask him, Hegi Diran. Hmm? He was only wondering, you hear a pie, madam? Mone, you stop poo face, Marikon Togi dare. Eh? Nanak, our Lena Lehoka, Baya Bandi too. Our Nana Baita Renta. What the Nodi? Eh? That is how we should follow. Because why? Why I went and talked and greeted him? Because my mind and heart I have decided and I have meditated. Hallelujah. So, when I am thinking right things and when I am storing right things, yes, there are so many strong, wounded beliefs, wounded thoughts, wounded experiences, wounded decisions are there. Hmm? All those you have to remove through your conscious mind. Then you will have self control, you will be a righteous person. Hallelujah. When we love God with all our heart and mind, that is, when we don't allow anything in our heart and mind to think and decide and have any emotion which are not pleasing to God, even our outward actions, our body automatically follows. Our actions will change. You cannot say that, I am not getting self-control, Pastor. Hmm? I won't, but I am not getting because you are not cleansing the meditation of your heart. You are not thinking right things. You are not capturing that old thoughts and wrong thoughts and giving up and replacing with right thoughts. That's the reason. This is an exercise. Eh? Without hard work, nobody can gain anything. To earn money, for education, everything. Hard work is required. Isn't it? Eh? Believers, where do you have to go and do hard work? Tell me. You have to go and do some mystery work or some building work. Eh? That building work you have to do in your mind. It is with you easy. You are carrying your mind, heart and your body all the time. Anywhere you are, from morning till evening, from morning till night, till you go to sleep. You can do this exercise consciously. Lord, help me. I should love you. Eh? See, who will obey this commandment? Those who want to love God. As you are not changing all this because you don't want to love God. God is asking. It's a commandment. Love me with all of your heart, mind and strength. You all have, most of you, but if you are not baptized, why did you take baptism? It's a commandment, isn't it? It's a commandment that you have to be born again and take baptism. 
so you have taken baptism and today you are a child of god in the same way understand dear friends it's a commandment for those who have taken baptism because the other people who are outside they don't know this good god they only know to mock at this good god they are ignorant they are in darkness we have come to the marvelous light of god hmm? god is asking you love me love me with all your heart mind and strength hallelujah so our actions will be affected when we change our thoughts and our heart to love god with whole being is an exercise which you have to choose to do every day chumma coming and sitting on the chair and warming up and going is of no use every day you decide today i love my god with all my heart all my soul and all my strength lord help me let my thoughts let my words be pleasing unto you lord i may not remember you have to remind me i may talk what i am not supposed to talk i may think what i am not supposed to think please control me lord give me understanding these are the prayers you have to pray instead of that you will tell give me one job give me marriage give me a good lady give me a good man hmm? after marriage give me a good child devasthanagala ella hogi bit bartare child 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 doddadaga ayyo why god you have given such a tarle child always grumbling murmuring angry at god always even those who have accepted god are misunderstanding this god because they are not loving god love is a sweet thing isn't it love we need people to love us when people love us how good feeling we have but if opposite is what they are hating you they are all the time fighting with you they are talking all the bad about you do you feel good do you feel good no love love is the sweetest thing of all understand you know that god is telling you love me i will love you jesus is telling in john 15:10 if you obey my commandments you will remain in my love i love you i love you so much i want to give you a life keep obeying what i am talking you always feel that warmth of love love is the sweetest of everything experience this love my dear friends then you feel like living hallelujah that's the reason boyfriends and girlfriends they think if they have a boyfriend ah somebody is loving so through that loving feeling they have a life stupid that is lust that is not love they are not loving you from their heart they want something from you understand the person real pure love will remain with that person forever why boys and girls they keep loving break up loving break up loving break up loving break up but still they will be after love that love is not god's love if anybody loves you deeply if that love is genuine that love will only die with him that is god don't you want to love such a person he is asking you love me don't you love him why he is asking you love you when you think of that love my dear friends you feel like living just like boyfriend or girlfriend they are thinking of that boys or girls love hmm? ah, messaging messaging eh talking talking what the love something goes wrong finished no message no meeting hmm? over that is not love that was lust if a person who loved you even if you have done something wrong he will not hate you that is real love only god can do that hallelujah and you should do for the people I'm not talking about the lustful love. Even if people hate you, you should love the people. Even if they do wrong things to you, you should love them back. Hmm? How God has loved you. The definition of love is 1 Corinthians 13th chapter 4 through 7. Love is patient. 
Love is not arrogant. Love is not jealous. Love is gentle. Love forgives everything. Love bears with everything. That is love with God and with the people. Hallelujah. So Jesus is telling in John 14, 15, If you love me, you will obey my commandments. And John 14, 21 through 24, Jesus said, He who has my commands and keep them are the people who love me. And he who doesn't love me doesn't have my words. Did you get me? He is telling, people are telling, people are in church and they are telling, Lord, I love you, but they don't want to obey me. They don't have my words in their heart to forgive the people or bear with the people or stop quarreling or whatever they are doing. They are just coming to church, but they are the same people. They go back home, they get back to their office and they are the same people. They have no self-control. He's telling, they are not loving me because they don't have my words. They don't have any self-control because they don't love me. Today, are you telling that pastor, I am not getting self-control? Can I tell you the reason? You don't love God. You believe in God, 100%. But you don't love Him. He loves you. He loves you. You cannot compare this love with anyone else. Just sit in His love. That's enough for you. You think only a boyfriend's or a girlfriend's love is everything? Hmm? Once you marry that person, you will know who that person is. If he's a genuine person, he will continue the marriage. Otherwise, break up, divorce, party and living. That is not pure love. Hallelujah. And if we love God, then obedience naturally follows. Naturally follows. Self-control naturally follows. You don't have to say, self-control is not to come in. I want, but not to come in. You will never tell. If you love God, you will control Him. You will control yourself. Why you are not able to control yourself after many prayers, after many attempts? Because you are not loving God. That's the reason. The love of God control you. Wonderful God. And again Jesus said in John 15.10 If you obey my command, you will remain in my love. So it is easy to love a human being whom you can touch, hear, feel and get an embrace. Isn't it? But today understand my dear friends. Somebody whom you cannot see loves you. He cares for you. He embraces you at this right moment. Will you accept it? Hug yourself. That is God's hug. God wants to hug you and tell you, I love you, my daughter. I love you, my son. Love me. Not only He is loving you, He is telling, Love me with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This morning, receive that love and go back and answer him. While we are praying, answer him. So what did I say? It's easy to love a fellow human being. We can see, touch, hear and get an embrace. It's far more challenging to love a God. We cannot see who allows us to go through challenging trials to correct us, to transform us, to transform us and give us a good life. Hallelujah. Who has made a promise that I will never leave you, never forsake you. Who has given a promise that don't be fearful. I didn't give you a spirit of fear. But a spirit of love and power. Hallelujah. God has called people to seek him. To walk in love, in obedience to God's word. With all of their heart, strength and mind. Even seeking also last week we have learned. How we have to seek him? With all of our mind heart and strength so that we can live in peace, harmony, satisfaction, always joy, always life. Life. You are full of life. You are full of life. My dear believers, have this life and give the life to others. Whoever touches you should get that life. Here, anybody touches you, their life only will go off. Isn't it? They will die. That's your testimony today. Let it be that last day. 
revive yourself. Hallelujah. Benefits of loving God are very crucial and they are incredible. Living in the obedient love not only gives us eternal life to heaven. Eh? We have to live a pure life to reach heaven. Romans 2, 7. But also great earthly benefits. These benefits are very crucial for us if you have to live peacefully and enjoy the victory and success in this life. Deuteronomy 30, 16 and 17 and Deuteronomy 28. The whole chapter you can read. Especially 1 and 2 he is telling, if you obey all my commandments, I will give you all the blessings. People will tell God's love is unconditional. Means that doesn't mean that he will not punish you. He will not discipline you. You cannot stop reaping what you are sowing. People are thinking God's love is unconditional. So today I can sow ragi and tomorrow I can reap wheat. That's what believers are thinking. Is it true? No. That means today you are living a sinful life without any self-control in your thoughts and in your actions. And you are thinking that God will bless you. No, no, no. He is not God. He is not God. Those who call the name of God depart from iniquity, Bible says. Those who call the name of God depart from iniquity. That is God. That God is calling the people. People are rejecting and going through the tragedy and misery. And they are mocking at God. Shame on them. Isn't it? Tell me my dear friends. Go and talk to them. Bring such people to Lord. Wonderful God. Then 1 John 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. I told you, if you are embracing that love of God and you are living in that love, you will never have any fear. Any fear. Many things will come to fear you, but you will never be fearful. You will never be. Because you know that God is with me. Oh, you are getting a chest pain? So what? I will not get a heart attack. I will never. Even if it is increasing, even if your family members are telling better go and get the treatment or show to a doctor, you will tell, no, my God is with me. You kneel down, even if you have done some sin, you can tell that God forgive me, I am going to live a clean life. Please help me, heal me, even if it is a heart problem, heal me. You will be healed. Do you know that? Perfect love cast out fear. But you are not loving God. But you have tremendous faith in God. One small ant bite Madi the Resak. Why your heart attack? Eh? Heart attack. My heart is paining. My heart is paining. Immediately you will go to the doctor. Why? You are only believing in God. You are not loving God. Perfect love cast out any sort of fear. Do you have fear today? Understand. Your love is not perfected. For whatever you are fearing, God is telling, don't fear, I am with you. Corona came and went two years. How did I lead Christway Church people? Did you fear Corona? No. Did anyone get Corona in Christway Church? No. Some of you might have got some slight fever. Hmm? But you were not admitted in the hospital like how initial things happened. I had nurses working with me. They were treating corona patients at that time. That person is not here, otherwise I could have called her and made her talk the testimony. Hmm? She was treating the corona patients. She didn't get corona. Doctors got and nurses got in their own hospital. But she didn't get. Why? Because she's a child of God, trained by a pastor and a church. That's the reason. Please understand. I have been giving her strength. Don't worry, don't worry. She was telling me, no pastor, everybody is getting, even doctors are getting and admitted. They are all telling me, they are all challenging me, next is you. I said, tell them no. Tell them no. No pastor, I am getting fear. No, tell them you will never ever get corona. She didn't get. She didn't die. She is alive. Many doctors died. Many nurses died. Many patients died. Perfect love cast out fear. Initial stages, many of you were under the blanket. What messages I have given you, you know that. Hmm? 
Get up. Get up. Nothing will touch you. Go sit and read the word and praise God. Start walking in God's way. Go and tell the gospel. Do God's work. Nothing will happen to you. None of us got corona. But the world will be fearing about. Many things will come and go. Bible it is written. Many things, many fearful things will come and go. But my children, you don't worry. Nothing will come to you. If you are loving me with all of your heart, mind and strength, I am with you. I am with you to protect you. That is not for you. That is for the people who are mockers. That is for the people who are commenting me. That is for the people who are against me. That is for the people who don't want to walk in my ways. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. That is for the proud people of this world. But if you are humble, nothing will happen to you. Hmm? With testimony I am preaching, my dear friends. I am not taking some test from the Bible and written it in my book and reading. I am a teacher. That's why I am reading from my notes. I prepare notes. Very careful notes. Within 40 minutes I should stop. That's the reason I read and teach. Hallelujah. I don't want to make you bored in the meeting. So, 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. A man who walks in iniquity has every reason to fear and to be tormented. Fear has torment. You know that once you fear, many people died out of corona. You know why? Because of fear. Because of fear, many people die. Today also many people are dying in the hospital because of fear. Because they don't have hope. But if you are a child of God, even if doctors say that there is no medicine, you are going to die within 24 hours. You will not die if you have hope in God. Do you know that? Many people are dying out of fear. Many people are hospitalized because of fear. Because they don't have hope. But those who love God, in them, faith will increase. Hope will increase. What did God say? As your soul prosper. You will be prosperous in everything and in good health. Where? I will get good health. Oh, my chest is paining. This is not heart pain. Heart pain. Or my family has got cancer history. I will not get. My family has not accepted Jesus Christ. They may get. Today I am a child of God. I don't get cancer. This is what you should tell. No. Everybody is scaring you. You have a family history. People who don't want to follow God, they will be in strict diet. Too. Hmm? Because I have a family history. I have to be very careful with my body, whatever I eat and whatever I do. But such people are not in the church. They are at home, teasing God, teasing pastor. Hmm? You know. So a man who walks in iniquity has every reason to fear. Fear has got torment. Now you understand fear has got torment. Many people died out of fear, not out of corona during those times. And today also, many people are in the hospital and they are dying out of fear. But someone who is walking in the love of God, he is entitled to God's protection over his life. He will not need to fear, neither will be tormented since God is on his side. And Bible says in Proverbs 28, 1, Righteous are as bold as lion. Hmm? Hallelujah. So today, if you are experiencing worry, anxiety, fear and hopelessness, that simply means you need to repent and draw near to God and love God with all of your heart, mind and strength and enjoy your everyday life. Once again, let me tell you, my dear friends, what is the sweetest thing of all this world? Love. Love God and get the love back. You will enjoy your life. Let's close our eyes in prayers. Mm -hmm.